What's going on guys? Joey Franzel here with Flex Training Systems and uh, it is Friday night here in Texas, a little past midnight. Um, for those of you wondering, uh, Tina did very, very well. She got second place. She benched 90 kilos, which was a surprise. Um, basically, if the girl in front of her missed her third, then uh, she had a chance to kind of YOLO and potentially get second. Uh, if she were to miss, then third was, um, you know, there no matter what. So might as well go for it. And uh, she ended up getting it, which is a five kilo PR um, in the Arnold was what, six or six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. I believe it was six and a half weeks, something like that. Which is very significant, especially for someone who's been training as long as her. Um, and you know, silver medal at IPF Worlds um, is, it's it's been a long time coming, literally uh, three and a half years. Uh, when I met her, she was only benching the bar in yellows, which is like uh, 50 kilos, 55 kilos. So uh, if you count the clips. So she's definitely come a long way. Um, <clears throat> and there's something about, uh, you know, just when the lifters are up there on the podium and they're, uh, you know, playing their national anthem and they're singing their national anthem and, and everybody's just kind of um, paying their respects. It's just, it's a special thing and um, it's it's something that you only get at these big uh, world competitions where you have uh, all these different cultures, uh, all these different people coming together, putting their differences aside to, um, for some, something greater, It's it, it feels like at least. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what happened today. Also, uh, Alec from the UK, um, he hit a five kilo bench PR as well. Uh, ended up benching 180 at 105. He is a junior. Uh, it was very nice to meet you, Alec, if you're watching this. And uh, thank you for the Great Britain shirt. I'll definitely be wearing it. Um, hopefully this week during some big squats. So that was definitely good to see. Uh, very busy week. Um, but uh, got all my training in. Everybody did well. And uh, next weekend we have a, you know, I'll be in another hotel um, dealing with a big meet. Uh, probably posting more videos like this during that situation. Alrighty, it's two, already two and a half minutes into the video. Uh, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about um, kind of how uh, adversity can help you. Um, uh, obviously, this can work in real life and you know in powerlifting as if powerlifting isn't real life uh, but what do I mean by that um, I was actually listening to a, a podcast recently that one of my buddies was on and in that podcast um, uh, somebody was talking about uh, how you want to like consist consistently put your lifters in favor favorable uh, situations um, as to kind of build them up and boost their morale um, and, and give them a lot of confidence. Um, I think that's great, and I think um, that's going to come just like if you're if you're going through the natural phases of training. Uh, you know, your strength is going to go like this. It's 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 going to go like this. You know what I mean? Over time, um, and dealing with this, the little dip in strength. Um, you know, is what we would call like adversity, and there's a lot of different reasons why your strength might take a dip. Could be things training related. It could be things that you have absolutely no control over. But I feel that um, you know it's okay to yeah. Obviously, you want to try to put your lifter in a favorable situation all the time. Um, but dealing with a little bit of adversity can be very very beneficial. If you have someone who's never dealt with a problem ever, you know they're just it's those guys that, uh, let's say they've never gone through an injury or they've never really dealt with any kind of like overreaching phase. When they go through that for the first time, they freak out. They freak the fuck out. Like panic messages, panic emails. Am I dying? Am I losing strength? What's happening? Da 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 da. I, I, what, what, something that pees me so much is when guys say, um, you know, I'm getting weaker. There's no way for you to know that until you go through the entire phase, peak, and then see where you're at. You're not just gonna get weaker, like definitively, you know, you are weaker. We're 
I mean, I'm actually, I'm not at my peak strength like ever. It's only, it's very, very temporary. I've only been strong a few times in my life. Most of the year I'm, I'm relatively strong, but I'm usually beat or I'm not as peaked as I want to be. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be meat day peaked all the time. And I think um, there are a lot of benefits to doing it that way. <sighs> That's just me. But there are, um, you know, some lifters where they'll, they won't really, if this is their peak, they won't really go any farther than like maybe here. So here's their peak. Maybe they, maybe they hover around here. I'll, I'll fluctuate a lot. Um, meaning, uh, you know, when I'm fatigued, I'm fatigued, like super beat. And then, uh, you know, it, there's even some people, it seems like you can't, you can't give them enough. They just adapt to everything. But going through those ups and downs in training, again, sometimes you can control it, sometimes you can't. Dealing with that adversity, um, sometimes intentionally going through stuff like that can help build character and help, um, you know, once you overcome that stress, once you overcome that adversity, whatever the heck it is, uh, you're going to be stronger from it. I feel like I'm at a point now in my coaching uh, and my lifting where, like, I can't think of a terrible, terrible scenario that would um, that I'd be afraid of or be uh, like hesitant to go into because I've done uh, like so many different. I've been in so many different situations. I've handled, you know, thirty plus lifters over a weekend. I've handled eight people in one day. Uh, I've traveled and competed. I've you know cut a bunch of weight. I've just done a lot. Of, I've I've made mistakes cutting weight and still made weight. I've I've just done, you know. I, all these different things that I'm at a point where, um, especially in my training where I just feel when I'm not strong, I'm not even worried about it. Like it doesn't bother my mood or my morale at all. It does not, like I don't get discouraged. I just, I understand that this is a no normal phase of training and there's, uh, you know, I've gone through this many, many times before. I've dealt with that adversity many, many times before. Just like in life, like coming up, um, I went through, I'm not trying to say that I've been through, you know, uh, a super ultra terrible life, but I've, um, I went through some stuff that had, where I had to like grow up early, uh, and, and just deal with things on my own and figure stuff out for myself. And I feel like that's helped me, um, in life and like within my training, the, the little speed bumps that I go into or the big, you know, setbacks that I've gone through with like my big injuries and coming back from all that and, you know, doing things that I never thought I would do again. Um, has just shown me that, uh, you know, I've been through some shit and it's, it makes you mentally tough. And, um, I think trying to avoid, obviously you want to avoid making mistakes. You want to avoid, uh, problems. Um, and you know, there's some guys that have been with me for a really, really long time and they're on like a streak, uh, where they just haven't had a bad meet. Uh, but sometimes, um, someone who comes to mind is my boy, Danny Sullivan, uh, he had a meet where, you know, pretty much everything that could go wrong within his prep did. We still managed to, you know, put up a decent total and, um, you know, he hit every single lift. Um, so I'm very proud of him for that. I think he may have missed his third deadlift, I'm not sure. But, um, you know, you're going to deal with adversity at times and you just have to know that I always like tell people that life is like a circle. And sometimes you're going to be at the bottom. Sometimes you're going to be up top. Um, and sometimes you're going to be at the top for a long time. And sometimes you might be at the bottom longer than you'd like to be. But you just have to know that it, it's, it's always going to get better. Um, and you're going to look back at what you went through. And it's going to just make you feel so much better about the future. And whatever obstacles may come up, you're, you know that you're going to... Uh, tackle them. We don't want to be afraid of um, dealing with opposition. We don't want to be afraid of dealing with, um, you know, fear in general is, it's like useless. It doesn't do anything but create problems and get, you know, overthinking. All those things go hand in hand and it's just, um, there, there's, when you think about it at the end of the day, like the problems that we have as powerlifters are not problems. They're really not big problems. Um, so, you know, you just have to understand that 
I feel like I've said this a million times that what you're going through now is not going to be forever. It's going to get better. Dealing with some adversity um, is good for you, and I think you're going to grow from it, and it's going to make you a better person, better lifter. Um, you know, uh, even like just thinking about uh, going through like tough relationships, right? Let's say. Uh, you know, you're dating a girl for a long time and she cheats on you, right? Yeah, that's fucking horrible. Nobody wants to go through that. Um, but you're going to become tough from that. You're going to learn from that. And let's say it happens to you again, it might not it might not mess with you as bad. Um, one thing that I look for in people in general, um, even in my personal relationships, is someone that's willing to uh, adapt um, to, you know, certain scenarios or, or change uh, for the better and grow stronger from whatever it is that they're dealing with. Um, and, uh, you know, that to me is just, I think it's a rare quality. I think it's um, something that comes with time. I think it's something that can be done if the individual really wants that. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, don't be afraid of a little adversity. It can help you in the long run. Um, I think, you know, even like when I write a program intentionally throwing someone into the meat grinder, it's definitely going to help them build character. Um, and that may, in the long run, be worth more than uh, I ever, you know, could have given them uh, just being very conservative and never, um, you know, trying to push them or making or showing them, uh, you know, what their body is actually capable of, what they're capable of uh, as an individual, you know, when when all this is thrown at them. So, um, alrighty guys, uh, that's it for the video today. I'm gonna, tomorrow morning we're gonna head back home to LA. Got like five or six hours of travel. Um, and then uh, I'll be doing some work over the weekend and then just getting ready for the next uh, couple meets, uh, you know, uh, the big meets that are coming up near me. And then, uh, yeah, and then before you know it, we're gonna be getting ready for Raw Nationals. Um, which I am very much looking forward to. We're gonna have um, more people in flex tees than ever. Uh, if you guys are interested in that stuff, there's a link in the bio below. And um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'll have thumbnails on these videos uh, when I can get to it. Uh, I've noticed that they do a little bit better when they have thumbnails and when I can monetize them right away. If I don't monetize them, YouTube's like, I don't give a shit about your video because we're not making money off of it, so why are we gonna promote it? But I think there's a good message here and, I, and I'd like to hit as many people as I can with it. Anyway, thank you guys and I'll talk to you in the next one.